I love it. All right, this is Act Now. I'm Juliana Forlano. So check it out. Down in Arizona, some interesting things uh, happened yesterday and today. We've got, um, well, first of all, the filibuster is basically standing in the way of voting rights and other critical issues. And uh, Kirsten Sinema, the senator there, she 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 is choosing to 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 keep the filibuster and she's not choosing to protect the people. So a Phoenix based activist and organizer um, made this political movie trailer. There's no movie. It's just a trailer, but it's cool as hell called The Betrayal. It depicts how Senator Cinema has turned her back on African-Americans, Latinos, indigenous communities and the rest of us who like democracy. Um, I'm going to play that for you in a minute, but they did have this. They did have this um, get together where Act TV was present to live stream it. And we got some clips for you. First of all, here is Pastor Warren Stewart um, from the African-American Christian Clergy Coalition talking about cinema and and why we need to, to hold her accountable. The buster was used a lot during the civil rights era by uh, Southern Democrats and, and politicians who were against the Civil Rights Acts. And so it has been used to keep back justice from people of color, from African Americans, brown, poor people, et cetera. It has a, has a long history. And again, for cinema to say that she supports John Lewis, she supports civil rights, and to hold on to such a uh, 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 relic is really contradictory to who she says she is. So. Perhaps we're seeing the real cinema. Perhaps we are. We also have a, a clip from Chanel Powell, the Phoenix-based activist who made this this um, trailer. We're coming. We're coming out with in, a, in just a second. Here, Chanel. Pro filibuster is an abused tool, not a treasure inscription of the United States Constitution. The filibuster was weaponized by slaveholders, then segregationists, and now anti-democratic actors. The filibuster. Um, sorry, in choosing to defend the filibuster over passing voting rights, Senator Kirsten Sinema has proven to be a villain in her own story, rather than her own nightmare. A nightmare that we, the people of Arizona, have yet to wake up from. Senator Sinema turned her backs on us time and time again. She failed to show up to create a committee for the January 6th deadly white supremacist insurrection at our Capitol. She refused to eliminate the filibuster to help fight for over 400 suppression bills introduced across this country, which four passed here in the state of Arizona. She shamefully blocked the minimum wage increase. She presented obstacles to expanding health care and social services. Meanwhile, she has wrapped in the corporate donations and entertained Republican leaders and refused to engage with us, her constituents. But all that has to stop us from not, that all of that has not stopped us from turning around from our communities because we know that our communities deserve better. We're here tonight celebrating the premiere of the betrayal. To make it clear that when we show up at Senator Cinema, she has a duty to show up for us. Showing up means choosing our rights and our livelihood over that damn filibuster. Yes. Ah, okay. I'm going to show you the thing, but first I want to tell uh, Giancarlo who's in the background to put up the, um, the lower third that talks about this particular action rundown because it has the action that these folks, uh, there you go. The action that these folks want you to take, you can text cinema to the number right there, which I'm going to have to get my eyes checked because I can't read it from this distance. <laughs> Um, yeah, in, in order to do some work against her. You've been following this filibuster issue, Jocelyn. Before we watch the trailer, do you want to weigh in on, on do you want to give any thoughts about, about this fight? Yeah, so I think um, the filibuster is one of those things that a lot of people may not understand but are now too afraid to ask because it's so central yes. to the media cycle. So to just recap, <laughs> passing something with a simple majority means you just need more more numbers of votes on one side than the other but with a filibuster you need a super majority which is why was it originally put in 
It was originally created by Southern Democrats who wanted to protect slavery. They could sense the abolitionist movement gaining power. So they created the filibuster to essentially create such a situation where they would need such an irrationally high majority of votes that they would, again, protect the institution. And it worked for a time. It's something that was, again, the reason we you hear the words uh, leftover from the Jim Crow yeah. movement is because the filibuster was also used to protect racist legislation at a time when Americans were waking up to the evils of racism that continued to exist after but Reconstruction. And that yeah. is very interesting, Jocelyn, because especially now that if I remember my history correctly, they had the filibuster, so they couldn't get rid of slavery in a peaceable way. So then they had to have a war. <laughs> I hope yeah. we're not marching down the same you know, pathway right now. A filibuster basically ensures that unless you have an overwhelming majority of senators united on something, you won't be able to enact legislation, which is Good not a democracy, <laughs> right? No. Because if obviously no congressional body is going to agree on everything uniformly, that's literally why we have elections. That's why we have debate. And the reason abolishing it is so important is because we now have a situation where the government is growing further and further removed from the popular will of the people. Uh, Kirsten Cinema from Arizona is getting in the way of this. Are the other Democrats supporting it or are they just kind of using her obstructionism to, uh, you know, to hide behind? Well, there are a number of Democratic senators that are not necessarily in favor of removing the filibuster, but... Her and Senator Joe Manchin are definitely, definitely the most vocal and most obnoxious about it. Uh, Senator Joe Biden has come out against the filibuster because if we are, if if we want to live in a democratic society, we need to be able to pass legislation. And a filibuster really just makes sure that that's not going to happen unless the legislation in question is so banal, it just won't happen. Well, I remember, I think, who was it? Uh, Mitch McConnell or President former President Donald Trump saying if the filibuster goes away, there'll never be another Republican in office because yeah, <laughs> and maybe even the centrist Democrats can be gotten rid of. Those will become the Republicans and then the Republicans will be like that nutty guy screaming from the street who doesn't have a party. That would be all right. Progressive well, because they know interest. they, I mean, look, everybody has these polling numbers. People are well aware that most of the American public wants investment and green energy, energy wants healthcare to change, wants drug prices to come down. They know that the only way to maintain their stronghold on political power is to cheat. And that's what the filibuster is. It's cheating. Exactly. So the people in Arizona made this awesome, awesome uh, movie trailer. It's making the rounds on the internet and it's getting attention um, to the fact that they are, they are organizing on the ground to fight against uh, uh, Senator Cinema's what they see as her betrayal. So let's take a look. The dream always starts the same. I'm locked in a house. There's this woman, I can't see her face. She's yelling about someone not listening to her. Who is the woman, Rosa? The woman is me. I realize I'm not dreaming. Who else is there? The filibuster. Cinema. The filibuster. It all comes back to her. She's keeping us trapped. She's using this Jim Crow relic to hold us it back. It was the filibuster rule Cinema supports that killed the For the People Act. To suppress the voting rights of black people. To block a vote to create a 9-11 style commission to investigate the January 6th attack. The filibuster. She's enabling it all. The filibuster. How does that make you feel? Rosa. Miss Cinema, no. Betrayed. Awesome. And if you want to get involved in that campaign, you can text Cinema, which is Cinema like the theater, but within us, to what is it, eight nine something? I can't see it. <laughs> Eight nine seven nine nine. Thank you for those of you just listening in. Eight nine seven nine nine. I did it earlier. It was great. Um, okay, so in the same state, you've got okay. So this is the evils of this is like a passive evil, right? Kirsten Cinema. This is the evil on the Democratic side. Now we're going to show you a little bit of evil that happened in the very same state. 
On the Republican side, this was brought to my attention by, well, Twitter, but also by our producer, John, John uh, Giancarlo. He, he's following things and he, he, you know, he explained exactly what's going on in this video. Do you know about this, Jocelyn? Okay, great. So I'm not even sure whether I should explain it first or just watch the thing first. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we'll talk it through a little bit first. So, um, there is a Senator, uh, Paul, uh, what's his name? Got Gossam? Yeah. Call Paul Gossard from Arizona. He released a video depicting a violent attack of progressive Democrats. Also part of this video is um, shots of immigrants marching, sort of marching like at the border, like you would, it looked very, we're marching off to the gulags. <laughs> we're marching off to the, the camps. Um, and there's blood over those Im images of the immigrants. Really disgusting, very vile, very violent. Um, he is also, he is the chairman of the Congressional Nuclear Caucus in the House of Representatives. His own brother calls into the Tom Hartman program and says he's really mentally deranged for reals all the time, often. Um, what kind of messaging is this coming out of the Republican Party? I mean, it seems like it's the same fascist propaganda that happened before World War II in Germany. And in fact, it is. Let's take a look at the video, Jocelyn, and then we can discuss. Who's this guy? That's him, right? You need Giancarlo to jump in and... Yeah. He's like the big hero, this guy. Now look. Immigrants, blood. I believe this. these are images of ice. That's Giancarlo, our producer. This is incredibly disturbing. Very. We haven't even gotten to anywhere yet. <laughs> I mean, John Carlo, tell us what we're seeing. So this is uh this is off a Japanese anime called Attack on Titan, and they are uh, they superimposed AOC's face on the uh, on the mutants, and now they're killing them. Uh, <laughs> pretty yes, Jocelyn. Jocelyn's face is correct. The anime also deals in a lot of uh, kind of pro-military, a lot of fascist, anti-immigration uh, imagery and propaganda. It's very, very strange that they did this. Where did he put this video? On, on Twitter. Twitter. On his yeah. Twitter. And he was very excited about his team doing it. Uh, and then it even added the tweet, uh, does anybody like anime? Anime, also, of course, being the Japanese animation medium. Uh, so now it went it went viral for obvious reasons, and the the video went by so fast that it was really hard to pick up what was going on. But there's a still shot of uh, Representative AOC's face superimposed over someone who's getting murdered by being clubbed over the back of the uh, of the neck. So let's take um, uh, uh, John Carlo put up that image. I, I I had to have John Carlo slow it down. There it is. This is she put this out on her own. Um, on her own tweet. Check out what she, I mean, this is absolutely incredible. Am I right? She writes the sick, this is sick. This is from Ted, Lou. Ted Lou. Yeah. She, yeah. she quote tweeted Ted Lou with the tweet that we had up earlier. Yes. This is sick behavior from representative Paul Gosser. He tweeted out the video showing him killing representative Ocasio-Cortez from both his official account and his personal account in any workplace in America. If a coworker made an anime video killing another coworker, that person would be fired, but I hope they wouldn't just be fired, but they would also be, um, you know, arrested and, or, you know, I don't know if there's a arrest to be made, but at least investigated. Uh, we are taught, he is, it's suggestive to the fans. You know, once you put something in people's minds, then they oh, think were, about it and then they freaking go do it. I think what's really disturbing, and this is just like, I mean, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Giancarlo, I'd never seen the video before today. And Juliana hadn't either. I, I kind of <laughs> <laughs> he brought it up and I was like, what? We're talking about that other video from Arizona. 
So I just, I, it's really, look, I mean, C Congressman Lou says it best. If you had, I mean, Juliana, if you put a video on the Act TV page of you murdering me or vice versa, right. the person who did that would get, it's like he said, would get let go so fast. Right. And in not an not ideal let go, world, but like investigated. And right. where are and the other Republicans who are denouncing this? And why is it still up on Twitter? This is in instigating violence. Why is this still on Twitter? Why is that? Twitter did hide it. So you can you can view it. If you go, it says, you know, there, there is a warning on the video. Uh, yes, but why is his account not suspended? Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. No, well, no, and that's, no, I mean, no this goes back to a lot of things we've been dealing with where both, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all these social mediums are censoring, you know, we have a bunch of progressive leading pages and we'll get censored over the most banal, ridiculous things. Like you'll share a meme that's clearly a joke. And you'll get flagged like, oh, this is. Uh, oh, we got we got flagged on YouTube for uh, breaking down something that someone else said about yes. January 6th. Yeah. So, yeah. that you know, in addition to that, it's, you know, it's just the difference between what we're mad at the left about or the Democrats about. I don't want to say the left because there's a big difference uh, and what we're mad at the Republicans about is is the chasm. I mean, they are in inciting violence toward immigrants and our elected officials. This I is think it's really important that we, you know, look, we're uh, women. <laughs> I think it's really important that like the violence against Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, it has a very specific, disturbing, frequently sexually violent tone to it because she is a young, attractive woman of color. And it's mm -hmm. incredibly disgusting the the malevolence that's pointed at her individually when okay there are tons of progressive members of congress i don't see them making videos like this about congressman mark pocan or you know <laughs> right I mean, seriously exactly. And it, exactly and aoc has become the target of this white supremacist vitriol and it is emblematic of a long trend against women of color who for simultaneously sexualizing and you know inc inciting violence and it's just it's nothing new but it's incredibly disturbing to watch play out in what should be the highest legislating body of the land back to and our last segment in our last segment we talked about um the headline segment so if you're watching on youtube go back a segment you'll see um we talked about how uh, society is becoming more and more anxiety provoking, very frightening. And this kind of rhetoric, this kind of imaging from an elected official, I could see some Q nut putting it up and being like, nee, nee, and then kind of getting in trouble for that being on there. But this is coming from an elected official with the elected officials permission without any denunciation from the rest of the party. They are basically tacitly approving this is okay. Remember when Kathy Griffin, comedian Kathy Griffin, got basically her career was destroyed by people on the right, but also people on the left who said she had gone too far. There were Democrats who said she had gone too far when she put up and held up. She made a, you know, she held up like a Trump mask, the bloody Trump mask, something similar to this, but she is a comedian, not an elected official whose word, you know, no one's going to take Kathy Griffin star of my life on the B C list or whatever it is, uh, uh, you know, who does comedy for a living serious to start like an insurrection against an elected official. She could also have been arrested if she was trying to start an insurrection. She was making a joke. But when this guy, of course, he's going to say, mark my words, he's going to say, oh, it was just a joke. That you know, that's that's what narcissists always say. They say so. Juliana, um, there's a little update on the story. Nancy Pelosi has called for an investigation by the House of Ethics Committee and law enforcement on Tuesday relating to the video. She asked House Minority Meat Leader Kevin McCarthy to support the move. Uh, quote: Threats of violence against members of Congress and the President of the United States must not be tolerated. Pelosi said. And did Good. Kevin McCarthy get back to? Uh, did anybody? Uh, did <laughs> You know, it's like also with this crazy 
stuff. It's like they're wasting our time. Now Pelosi's got to put out a statement. She's got, you know, her staff is busy working on stuff, stuff we may or may not think is progressive enough. But at least, you know, it's just like, I, I hope they do do an investigation, but an investigation is not enough. We need like stronger words. We need condemnation. We need the party itself to condemn this uh, 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 horrendous behavior. And it's not just the AOC part. It's the blood over the immigrants part. Am I right? I, it's, I, it's, oh, sorry, John. No, ahead, I, Carl. Just, I don't just, care if you're wearing add pajamas. A little <laughs> context for people that might not be familiar with the show or anything. Like there's, there's a lot of, you know, kind of white nationalist propaganda and imagery that, that really like permeates the show. That's it's a lot of discourse all the time about it. And like, what do a lot of like the symbolic parts of the show mean? So it's like, it's, it's pretty adequate for a Republican and not surprising at all uh, that they, that they kind of go this route with a show that has been like in constant, you know what I mean? Like the glorification of, of the military you know, very anti-immigration. They, they, people are are put literally behind walls that separate them from other parts of society. So, it, it, like, it's not surprising at all. And then, you know, all the politicians weighing in. Uh, Chuck Schumer said uh, that it that this was absolutely disgusting by by a small person. Um, That's even more disturbing yeah. because uh, John Carlo, because um, this clip just went onto Twitter. But as you said, behind the scenes, like progressives aren't watching this stuff. You know, this is going on over and over. And this is basically, I hesitate to say this, but it's mass brainwashing. It's mass mind control. It's a changing what is allowable and for an allowable discourse in our society. And it's just contributing to misogyny. It's contributing to hate. It's contributing to what I foresee as more attacks on um, immigrants, people of color, women, uh, marginalized communities, progressives, academics. We've seen this happen before in history, and I don't think we should be taking it at all lightly. The radicalization of young people as well. Like, you know, you use things that they're familiar with, right? Video games, shows that they like, right? And that's how you radicalize, you know, these people on 4chan and, and these young people, you know, all these, you know, Gamergate, all, all that stuff that goes back. I mean, that's that's how you get them. Right. And then that's how you radicalize, you know, younger generations of, of people. You said it. We're talking to John Carlo. Uh, John Carlo is our producer. He also has his own podcast. John Carlo, what's, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, po what's we your podcast? The pod? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I, do. I do things uh, on, on our, we do things with Miami Heat Beat. I'm the editor, co founder, producer, writer, reporter. Uh, Miami Heat Beat. We're on Twitch a lot. We do daily streams uh, on twitch.tv slash Miami Heat Beat. Uh -huh on Twitter at MIA Heapy. So we do tons of stuff with the NBA, with the Miami Heat. A lot of fun things tonight with everything that happened with Nikolai Jokic and Markeith Morris. If anybody saw the news on that. So we have tons of fun stuff streamed tonight, 7.30 on our We've Twitch put page, Giancarlo so. on the beat of being young and <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and knowing things about sports. I'm almost 30, Juliana. Listen, I'm over the hump. It, it's, it, it's over for me. <laughs> no, not yet. 30 is the new 20. Oh, man. Yeah, thirties and new twenty. Since we all have to live at home with our parents because there's the economy <laughs> <and> and shit. <laughs> hey, John Carlo, thanks for help producing today. We did have, and I think I might have put out there, but we did have uh, booked a climate um, and national security expert. But guess what? Right at the very last second, he got called to talk uh, to like some British MPs, and that seems you know very important. So I didn't give him any shit about it, but he's coming on tomorrow to discuss with us. It's uh, author and scholar Anatole Levin. He is the author of Climate Change and the Nation State, and a senior fellow at the Quincy Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft. I love those people. Joe Serencion is a regular here, and he's the one who uh, got hooked me up with this guy, so we can have him on. These are the questions I have for him. This is what I'm going to ask him tomorrow. Uh, what is the U.S. national security apparatus planning on doing now that, uh, you know, cascading ecological disasters are becoming more and more of concern as a national security issue? Is the U.S.'s aim to mitigate and correct the disaster? Or are we going to try to use the military to, like, wage a war against climate change and just try to fight our way out of things like, you know, uh, hordes of people trying to migrate north or south or whatever happens. Anyway, it should be an interesting show, if not completely depressing, but we're starting to move our way into dystopia here on Act Now. 
be, I don't know why, maybe it's just my, where I am right now, but um, it's great to have Jocelyn on here with me uh, regularly. And I'm so glad you could put your whole time in today because um, it's terrific. It was terrific to have you. It was, it was lovely to be on here with you guys. And hopefully, so we'll be chatting again next Tuesday. We will have updates, not just on the Biff, but on the, all of it. The What's coming up on Solidarity Live this week? Your other uh, well, we show. actually will not be present because it is Alex's 10 year anniversary oh. of We Act Radio. Oh, which is exciting. Is there a exciting. party? I didn't, I'll be down there. <laughs> it is happening? Thursday night. Are you around? I'm, I could be. I have to sleep Perfect. In the car. I look forward <laughs> to the invitation. <laughs> oh my God, that would be so fun. All right, I'll talk to you later. Uh, <laughs> Jocelyn McCurdy Keats. Jocelyn, where can the folks follow you to get? Okay, you have to follow Jocelyn on Facebook, first of all. She's like, I told her she is writing a book with her post. <laughs> It's an yes, anti-dating book. <laughs> it's, no, it's like dating under late stage capitalism yes. and, uh, you know, uh, uh, crumbling patriarchy, hopefully. Exactly. Again, <laughs> right? we're hoping it's crumbling. Hoping that anime video problem. has me asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. I will see you guys next Tuesday, right? I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us, Jocelyn. It's great to have you here. You're watching Act TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. That was fun. Many thanks to everyone who uh, put time and effort into making this show possible. And thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. I tell your friends because, uh, you know, they might like it. <laughs> All right. We're, we are dark on this Thursday because I'm traveling for this show. And we'll be back on next Tuesday where you can see that um, depressing interview. No, I mean, maybe it's hopeful. Maybe it's hopeful interview with our national security expert. We also have Dean Baker coming on next week to talk about um, the economic impact that, that, that Biden's new bill will have. Will there be inflation? Should we be scared? Should I be buying Bitcoin? He will tell us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.